all i am dr rahul ellaparambath consultant neonatologist ikra hospital caligat so we are into the next topic of nnf kerala action plan of online learning module i thank uh, team nnf kerala for giving us this opportunity so i along with dr ranjit pk neonatal consultant at baby memorial hospital will be taking you through essential preterm care so ranjit has already talked about uh, the antenatal management and interventions that we need to do so i'll be taking you through the delivery room management of preterm babies i think most of these essential preterm care are some some are covered and some will be covered in the next few sessions so we'll be just giving an overview of these topics so just an introduction uh around 15 this is a data from the who around 15 million preterm births occur every year in the world so that is com- coming around more than 1 in 10 births and obviously india tops the list that is around 15% of the total births in india are preterms and the survivors so they may escape without a disability and can have some disabilities including learning disabilities and visual and hearing problems and to the extreme they can going for cerebral palsies so timely interventions may result in improved outcomes so that is what we are aiming for here so in the delivery room in a preterm delivery what we need to what all things we need to look into so that i'll just give a brief outline here so as you all know prematurity itself is a risk factor for resuscitation because of uh, the complications that can occur in a preterm neonate so the equipments may vary from the term uh, resuscitation and the, the resuscitator needs some more expertise in uh, preterm stabilization and these preterms are vulnerable to injury from the resuscitation procedures because of uh procedures the lower the gestation the higher the intervention for these babies so there are some uh, i'll i'm highlighting some of the issues that can have with the preterms so one is asphyxia which is contributed by the poor respiratory drive and tone and immature brain control in these babies they can develop hypothermia because of the thin skin decrease subcutaneous fat decrease brown fat larger surface area and a limited thermal response to cold stress and hypovolemia smaller the blood volume they have a small blood volume so there is increases risk of hypovolemia even when there is a smaller blood loss they can develop hypoglycemia because of the limited metabolic reserves and uh, limited uh, response to the hypoglycemic stress and respiratory distress obviously secondary to the immaturity of the lungs contributed by the deficiency of surfactant weak chest muscles and flexible ribs intraventricular hemorrhage secondary to the immaturity of the blood vessels and the rapid changes in the blood flow are uh, due to various reasons including resuscitation some of the additional equipments that are needed includes say uh, in the nrp we have already covered all these things so less than 32 weeks of gestation we need a polyethylene bag or a wrap and a thermal mattress if available then servo controlled radiant warmer oxygen blender with appropriate size saturation sensors ecg leads are desirable because sometimes we may not be able to appreciate appreciate uh, the heart sounds well and preterms tps resuscitator is another thing that is needed because it can be used for giving the required amount of pressures for during resuscitation and post resuscitation if you want to give a cpap for uh, respiratory distress you can use it as well then preterm masks then laryngoscope with the size of 0 and 00 et tubes of size 2.5 and 3 with a stillet if available pre-warmed transport incubator with the blended oxygen 
and some of the points to be noted for resuscitation includes always a good to place a hat on baby's head once the baby is received in the uh, polyethylene wrap because this is the uh, area with the maximum surface area that is the head so there is a chance of heat loss so always put a hat on the baby's head as soon as you receive the baby drying is not necessary if you are covering the baby with a polyethylene wrap then always keep the baby covered during resuscitation and stabilization and if the baby has labored respiration and if the oxygen saturation is on the lower side CPAP may be helpful preventing further uh, develop worsening of the respiratory distress and during the positive pressure ventilation the pressures can be uh, from 20 centimeters of water to 25 centimeters and always start with around 21 to 30 percent of oxygen in less than 35 weeks of gestation then again gentle handling because these babies are very fragile if they are not handled properly the chance of intraventricular hemorrhage is high avoid excess PIP as well as PEEP because both these can contribute to decreased venous return and thereby increasing the chance of intraventricular hemorrhage also it results in pneumothorax judicious use of oxygen I think uh, these things will be covered later and also do not infuse fluids rapidly in these babies because again the intravascular volume will, all, will get altered leading to intraventricular hemorrhage so coming to the delayed cord clamping which we routinely practice is it for preterms as well yes for vigorous preterms with intact placental circulation it can be practiced the advantages are improved cardiovascular stability and blood pressure decreased need for blood transfusions and decreased incidence of IVH and necrotizing enterocolitis vitamin K administration again should be administered to all babies and uh, there are different textbooks which gives different doses and uh, the one from AIMS protocol says it is 0.5 milligram for babies less than 1000 grams and 1 milligram for babies more than 1000 grams then the resuscitation uh, counseling of the parents is an important aspect so before as well as after the baby is born counseling is needed for the parents so antenatal counseling uh, we need to tell the parents about the short expected problems the outcomes that can happen all these things should be explained to the both, both to both parents and post uh, once the baby is delivered again you can tell the present condition and the compl uh, complications anticipated etc and in this era it is a must to document all these communications so next we'll go on to the transport of a sick preterm so as you all know uh, the preterms may the, the mothers just come and deliver in the hospital if, if it's a preterm birth you, you may not get a time to transport the baby in utero because in utero transfer is always the best mode so once the baby is delivered if there are no facilities available it is good to transport to a center where there is adequate facilities so for ideal transport ensure optimal resources that is the personnel that is the doctor the staff nurse etc the equipments that is uh, transport incubators oxygen adequate power supply in the ambulance and uh, pre-transport stabilization is the important thing we need to note for before transporting a baby because most of the time once the baby is delivered what we try what the people what the doctors try to do is immediately shift the baby to the next uh, referral center but before that we need to make sure that the baby is stable otherwise the baby may reach the hospital in a bad condition and the other things to note is the communication and the documentation 
So this pre-transport stabilization, there are a couple of mnemonics which can be used, the things that to be noted. So make sure that the baby's blood sugar is normal, the temperature and the breathing, blood pressure, laboratory workup if any, and the support that is to be given for the parents. So you can use the mnemonic stable or you can use either tops. It's again the same thing. The next important thing is the communication and documentation. So effective communication should be there to the referring unit, between the referred unit and the referring unit, between the parents and the doctors. And also it is a must uh, that you give a feedback to the referring unit about the condition of the baby. It's, it's a good practice to do it and always make a Make sure that the documentation is complete regarding the history, the diagnosis, the treatments given, the reason for transport and all the consents. And during the transport, make sure that uh, the temperature is maintained, airway, breathing, circulation, etc. are maintained. And in sick neonates, do not try to feed. Always better to put IV fluids when needed. And Always take the baby to the nearest facility with the fastest mode of transport by the shortest route. So we'll be discussing the topics in detail uh, in, uh, today. Thank you so much.